Let's talk a little bit about salt. Salt during prolonged water fasting. So how much salt should you consume if you're going to fast for two days, three days, or beyond? Well, you could consume no salt, but you'd be a bit more likely to have some side effects or kind of feel like your energy's low. So generally, it's a good idea to consume salt on a long fast. In my own experience, I've done prolonged fasting without any salt, and I've done it while I'm consuming extra salt, and it's like night and day. So it, it, I feel a lot better when I'm consuming plenty of salt. I have more energy. I can exercise. I have the exercise tolerance. I'm less likely to have any other side effects. You know, It helps with sleep, helps with a lot of stuff. So in this video, I'm going to share how much salt makes sense to consume during a prolonged fast and why. Why does it make sense to do that amount and kind of putting it in context so you can kind of understand um, how it compares to a normal day and all that sort of thing. And also how to get that extra salt. Do you just chug salt from the salt container? Um, probably wouldn't be very pleasant, right? So we'll talk about some alternatives and I'll just try to put everything in context so you can kind of understand the big picture and the specific details. First, let's cover a common question, common misconception maybe. Is salt bad for you? Well, the answer is salt is not nearly as bad for us as we've been led to believe. So salt has basically been blamed for a lot of the harms that come from sugar. That's, that's kind of the short answer to that question. So salt is not nearly as bad of a thing to consume as you've probably been led to believe throughout your life. For example, people that have high blood pressure are often told to limit their salt, but it's only even a small subset of those people that, um, that where their blood pressure gets lower when they limit their salt. So it doesn't even have that much of a benefit in that regard. And it can actually be harmful to reduce your salt. Why would it be harmful? Well, one example is if you're not getting enough sodium in your body, sodium, salt, same thing, because salt is sodium chloride. If you're not getting enough sodium in your body, then your stress hormones may have to go up to compensate, to maintain your blood pressure. And higher stress hormones is generally not something you want. So that's just a couple kind of summary points about why salt is probably not nearly as harmful as you've been led to believe. And if you want to dive into that topic, there's a book called The Salt Fix that you can go read. But I won't belabor the point. We'll just kind of move on from that. So how much salt? How much salt do you need during fasting? Well, let's start by talking about just a normal day when you're not fasting at all. How much salt do you consume? And I should probably change my terminology and say how much sodium. Because again, we're talking about sodium, salt is sodium chloride, and it's the sodium that, is, that we talk about the specific amount. So how much sodium do you consume on a normal day? Well, if you're one of those people who's trying to limit your sodium intake, then you're often told to keep your sodium level below about two grams. Two grams means 2,000 milligrams. Okay, a gram is 1,000 milligrams. That's important because the nutrition labels are going to list everything as milligrams, but it's easier to talk about grams. A gram is 1,000 milligrams. So on a normal day, you'd probably be, if you're trying to limit your sodium intake, you'd be limiting it to about 2 grams or 2,000 milligrams. But what if you're not really trying to limit it or you're not really paying that much attention? Well, then you're probably consuming quite a bit more, maybe 3 grams, 4 grams, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It depends a lot on the type of food you're eating and how much you're eating and many other variables. But that's just a little bit of context so you can kind of see what our starting point is. Next, let's touch on the topic of how much sodium would you want to consume if you're on a low-carb diet? Because that's a little bit of a different question and it helps introduce us to, helps kind of segue into the fasting discussion. So if you're on a low-carb or ketogenic diet, you're actually generally advised to consume more sodium than you would if you're not on a low-carb diet. And so instead of the two grams or three grams or whatever on a, that you might be advised to consume on a regular diet, on a keto diet, it's more like four to seven grams. So that's like 4,000 milligrams to 7,000 milligrams, maybe like the total sodium intake for the day. So why is that? Well, there are basically two reasons. One is... If you're eating a low-carb diet, you're probably not eating nearly as much processed food, as much junk food, as much processed food, because most of that is full of carbs and sugar. Um, so because, if, because you're probably not eating as much processed food, you're probably not consuming as much sodium, because a lot of the sodium we do consume on a standard American diet is coming from the processed food. 
But there's another reason which may be even more important, and that is when you're on a low carbohydrate diet, low sugar, low starch, maybe maybe a ketogenic diet, depending on how low you go, then your insulin level is going to be lower because insulin is that hormone that comes from your pancreas each time you consume starches and that sort of thing. So if your insulin is lower, there's a little known fact that when your insulin is low, you actually pee out more sodium in your urine. So you're excreting more sodium. So you lose more sodium if your insulin is low. So a lot of times when we talk about limiting salt or the whole discussion about salt and sodium is in the context of a standard American processed junk food diet. But then if you're cutting your carbs, you actually need more salt because all of a sudden the whole context changes. So now let's talk about sodium in the context of fasting. So when people say intermittent fasting, a lot of times they just mean fasting for a few hours during the day. So something like time-restricted eating, where maybe you have a 10-hour eating window, which means you'd be fasting like 14 hours overnight. So if you're doing that kind of short-term, daily, time-restricted eating, or if you want to call it intermittent fasting, that's fine. Well, should you increase your sodium intake? Well, the answer to that depends on a couple of other variables. What type of food are you eating? Are you doing that low-carb diet as well? Well, if so, yeah, you should probably boost your sodium intake. Or, and how long is your fast and how, how long is your eating window? So if you're only fasting a little bit, like a few extra hours per day, then you probably don't need to change much. But if you're fasting a lot and you're doing like one meal a day, then yeah, you probably would want to increase your sodium intake. So that's um, with the, the TRE or the just daily intermittent fasting, you may or may not need to make changes. It depends on the other variables, how much fasting and what type of food. So now let's talk about extended fasting. So let's say you're fasting for a day or two or three or four or five or 10 or 20. (laughs) Now, um, most people don't need to go on those crazy long fasts, but I'm just saying if you are doing a multi-day fast, even just a few days, then now what about the salt? Why, Why do you maybe need to take in some extra salt on those days? Well, if you've been listening to the video so far, you pretty much know the answer. It's a couple of the same reasons and, and maybe one other to consider. So while you're fasting, obviously you're not taking in any salt with your food. That all goes out the window. So those two grams, three grams, four grams, five grams, however much, however many grams of sodium you were consuming per day, now you're not consuming any. So there's none coming in. And because your insulin is going to be low, going to be, you know, getting to that lower level during a long fast, now you're going to be excreting or urinating out more sodium. So you're not taking as much in and more may be going out. Well, obviously then your sodium level is going to be dropping. And what's the consequence of that is you may kind of feel a lower energy level to some extent. You might have some symptoms like headaches or different things, and you may have a lower exercise tolerance. So you might feel like you can't really do much physical exertion as a result of the low sodium level. So now to answer kind of the big central question of this video, how much sodium should you consume on a prolonged multi-day water fast? Calling it a water fast because you're still drinking water, but how much salt might, might you want to add to that equation? Well, basically, you could kind of think of it as just being similar to if you're on a very strict low-carb diet. So if those people are supposed to consume about four to seven grams or 4,000 to 7,000 milligrams of sodium, that's a pretty good target if you're on a prolonged fast. So for most people, if you don't have any really specific medical reason why you need to limit your sodium, that would be a good target and probably be kind of the sweet spot for most people to kind of feel better, have more energy, be able to exercise and avoid side effects and that sort of thing. Obviously that's kind of flexible, but that's kind of a ballpark um, target and it's a pretty big window, so it could vary a little bit, obviously. So what if you have some medical condition like congestive heart failure or CHF, where you're often told to limit your sodium, and then maybe now you're trying to fast for 36 hours, so like, you know, a day, a day and a half. Um, Well, then how much sodium should you consume if you're normally told to limit your sodium? Well, obviously, I'm not going to give any individual medical advice in this video or in any video ever, but because, you know, I don't know your whole circumstances, but in general, if if you're, when you're eating you're told to limit your sodium to like two grams in a day. Well, why wouldn't you consume those same two grams at least on a day when you're fasting? So those 2000 milligrams of sodium as like that could be considered like the floor 
if if that's what you're told to limit it to on other days, that can be could be considered kind of a minimum amount to also take in during your fast. Um, but you might benefit from going a little bit higher. But again, I can't give you individual medical advice, but if you just think of it, all you're doing is really just replacing the sodium that you would already be taking in when you're eating, then why would that be harmful? It doesn't really make sense that it would be harmful um, because your insulin is going to be lower anyway, you're going to be urinating out more, etc. But talk to your doctors, kind of sort out all the other variables, but in general, if you're just replacing uh, the sodium that you would normally be getting through your food, then that seems like a reasonable idea. What about another medical condition like kidney failure? If you have total, complete kidney failure and you're on dialysis, should you, and you're doing like a fast, um, then should you be taking in some extra sodium? Well, you could again think of it like if you're just replacing the sodium that you would have been getting from your food, then that seems pretty reasonable. But kidney failure is complicated, so definitely talk to your nephrologist, talk to your doctors. This is not individual medical advice. But just replacing the stuff that you would normally be taking in seems pretty reasonable in general. So that's a lot of info about how much salt, but how the heck do you get salt while you're fasting? Because you normally just sprinkle it on your food, right? Or you eat some food that already has sodium. So how do you get that extra salt during your fast? Well, there's actually a lot of pretty easy ways to do it, and it doesn't have to be expensive at all. Um, for example, some of the things I like to use include bullion cubes, like you could dissolve a bullion cube in water, and it might have like five calories, so that's negligible, but it'll have like 700 or 800 milligrams of sodium. So you're already getting close to that one gram just with that. Um, certain types of broth, like veggie broth. There's a veggie broth I've used that... Um, has like 700 milligrams of sodium and about five calories, just like the bullion cube. Uh, there's also like bullion powder. It's a little bit easier to mix up. Um, you can use soy sauce because that has like a thousand milligrams um, of sodium. So a whole gram, one gram of sodium per serving usually, and maybe like five or 10 calories. Um, so there's actually several different things. And I skipped the most obvious one, which is you could take a spoonful of salt, put it in your mouth, and then drink it down with some water. <laughs> but, um, but since that doesn't taste very good, you might consider using one of these other options. Or you can measure it out, look at the nutrition facts. So a, a, ta um, a teaspoon of salt has about two grams of sodium. Um, but you look at your specific nutrition facts on, on the label and, and see how much yours has. Now, dill pickles are another good option because they have basically zero calories, um, but they have like 200 milligrams per pick, per spear or something, depending on the size. Um, and there are others. Now, you could also even buy some kind of electrolyte packet um, and mix it with your water or whatever. But ideally, you would want to be staying away from flavors and sweeteners because those can cause cravings and make fasting more difficult. There is, um, I know of at least one type of electrolyte packet that doesn't have any added flavors, I don't believe. Um, so I'll, I'll put a link to that below in case you want to try that specific one. But you could also just go with one of those cheaper options that I mentioned earlier. So if you're looking for other beginner fasting tips outside of just how much salt and why and all that stuff that we talked about in this video, I've got a playlist here that covers a bunch of beginner fasting tips to kind of help you get off on the right foot and be successful. I've also got a playlist here that covers a bunch of the health benefits related to fasting and why you would want to do this in the first place. Um, so you can find that playlist right here to kind of boost your motivation and understand how it can benefit your health. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.